Hi, it's Olga from SEO Sly. Welcome to SEO podcast by SEO Sly. Today I have a very special guest. This is Tomek Rutski from ziptie.dev. Hi, Tomek. How are you doing? Hello, Olga. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for your invitation. Yeah, I'm very happy to have you here. Yeah, I know you have so such such a huge knowledge around technical SEO and like crawling, indexing, stuff like that. And I hope that you will share some of your knowledge today with me. You can try. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, if someone doesn't know you, can you briefly introduce yourself? What are you up to? Like, what's what do you do in SEO? Uh -huh. So my name is Tomek Rutski and uh, I, I'm a co-founder of ZipTideF, uh, which is a tool helping you diagnose indexing programs. Uh, but most of you can recognize me as head of R&D at Warning.com, which is a technical SEO agency. So mm -hmm. we still cooperate with Bartosz Guralewicz, who is the boss of Warning.com, and we created a new tool called ZipTideF. That's why now it's I'm now um, shown as ZipTideF, but not Walni, but uh, part of my job is also um, related to, to Walni.com. Okay, okay. So, so now you have like two jobs, I can yeah. say. <laughs> okay, okay. Can you tell me a little bit mo more about your history? Like when did you start learning SEO and what were the beginnings? Why did you choose SEO as your career path? So... When I go back to history, I think it was in high school. Uh -huh. uh, one with my friends, we were creating some some websites for our own purposes, and we wanted to get some money from from this website. So let's say we created a discussion board. Uh, we created a a fun uh, fun website about a specific phone, etc. So like we wanted to get more money from uh, from ads in 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 high school. But, um, you know, that's challenging. So we had to learn how to do SEO. So we were uh -huh. doing some, you know, some black hat SEO in that days. Um, but, uh, yeah, and we get some, I would say, pocket money from these websites. Uh, but in that time, SEO, I feel that SEO wasn't for me in that time because it was, like, too black hat-ish. Uh, <laughs> And um, I came back to SEO when SEO was much safer place after Panda, after Penguin, uh, when uh, semantic SEO came into play. Uh, so I, I came back uh, in 2016 or 17, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, but uh, I started like 2009 when I was in high school. Okay, yeah, so that's a, that's a long history, yeah. Tell me more about those first websites. You you are saying pocket money, but so you were putting AdSense or affiliate links on, on them, right? Yeah, so that was AdSense. Uh, I also created, um, I don't think that, that many people know about that, but uh, I created a search engine that, oh. allowed, that allowed us to find uh, internet documents. So you can think, okay, I want .x, I want PDF, I want PowerPoint files. So it was uh, working exactly like uh, Google was working. But you think, OK, I want PDFs. I want uh, okay. that uh, type of document. Um, so that was pocket money. Uh, huh. Somehow I feel, felt like I didn't have time to, um, to improve that, to work on that. But it was it had a translation into Polish, English, and Russian uh, in that time. Uh, but yeah, I, I was like, okay, I want to go to next projects. I, I, I so, so, somehow I uh, forgot about this one. Uh, another was uh, another one was uh, online board, uh, the forum about specific uh, phone. So I think it was... I, what phones? Uh, fo phones. Um, what phones? Uh, it was Nokia, certainly, but I wasn't sure which one. Okay. Uh, not, the, not the first one, that was like... Yeah, uh, you 30, 30, 10. When you throw this phone, 
uh, from let's say uh, 10 meters, it's still alive. No, no, that was that that Nokia, but I, like it was like 15 years ago. So I I still not not sure what exactly the, that phone was, but that was Nokia. Okay. That was Nokia, but uh, not sure about the model. Sure. Okay. Yeah, one was um, about IT news. So uh -huh. we were um, writing some news about, so I was copywriter as well, uh, <laughs> editor. Uh, so we were writing uh, some news about IT. And then, then I noticed like after two weeks, um, my page rank, that was that time when the page rank was like publicly visible. My yeah, page yeah, yeah. rank uh, grow from zero to two just in two weeks. And I was like, wow. you see? <laughs> Ah, this is my website, like just two weeks, and my page like is level two. Oh. Like I, I, I think like like normal, like quite huge websites were had between four and six. Yeah, and if, I remember if, those times. <laughs> if just two weeks has passed, and my website is like the like the first website of mine has got like two, then I was like, oh, I can do everything. I can. Yeah. If that goes this way, like one, two more, so I was on the top, yeah. But you know that um, that was quite 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 interesting time. But no time, other duties, other when when I was younger, you know, ever even like playing football was like competitive to computers now. Yeah, I yeah. Think it was still yeah, sure, sure. I also one of my first websites was about I think Android phones. Like, yeah, I was describing different oh, Android Nokia. phones, but not 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 Nokia. It was like a little a little bit later. I think two thousand and ten, maybe eleven, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we shared the same background, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It looks like it. <laughs> Okay, and then you said you had a break, and why did you have a break from SEO? What were you doing during that time? Yeah, so basically, um, that was like when I finished my high school, I go to studies, and during my studies, um, I wasn't into SEO. What did you study? Uh, IT. Oh, so you are like the perfect SEO. Like I like I don't want to start that topic, but I do believe that there is no perfect background for SEO uh -huh. because like uh, people can uh, make a perfect SEO after marketing, after administration, after philosophy, after whatever studies, even without studies. So I don't yeah, want to but it, but I think it still helps a little bit. Yeah, it helps, but I I cannot agree that you know. Uh, uh -huh. I think special for, for, for SEO because like, this is so huge, uh, so many titles, so many approaches to S uh, SEO that yeah. one cannot say, okay, IT is the best, but others are not. No, like, especially for those who are new, as, new into SEO, like, I want to repeat that, like, there is no perfect background for, for an SEO, mm -hmm. at least in my understanding of our industry yeah sure so what did you major in during your studies what was your like because i guess you didn't learn anything about seo at yeah, the university uh, during your studies or did you so i would say um, more information is shared among marketing students uh, about seo than in the case of IT students. So we are like oh. trained to program, uh, you know, uh -huh. understanding how computer programs works, um, and understanding algorithms. Uh, but yeah, we, we are not touching upon SEO except for one lecture where we try to understand uh, page rank on data structures and algorithms uh, classes. Oh. So that was okay. one exception. Uh, but except for that, we didn't learn how to do, how to, um, like, we didn't learn anything about mm -hmm. SEO. Um, and, then, and then I was thinking, okay, uh, if, like, I think I was quite good at programming in that time, but I, I was thinking to myself, if uh, I can make that job, I can do a programmer in five, 10 years still. Um, and I think that, 
that wouldn't be much challenging for me. Uh -huh. but, you know, but with SEO, it's um, it's a bit different. So I found um, an internship related to uh, SEO. Then I went into that internship because um, with SEO, it's it's uh, to me at least it's much different than uh, programming because SEO is like to it's like chasing the rabbit. Uh -huh. you no. Know? When, uh, like for many people, uh, core updates, updates overall, uh, are something that it's like very annoying, very stressful. But to me, it's, uh, it's like different. But you know, you still can chase the rabbit, you can understand uh, the Google rules better. And this is not annoying for me, like the opposite. Uh -huh. I, I like when uh, it's interesting. Have, I, I maybe I have an exception, but you know, I, I like when the Google algorithms happen. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Because when you master one thing, like programming in one specific programming language, um, when you learn how to do one kind of job, mm -hmm. it's still not. It's still not creative for you. It's still not. Like there is no fun when you know all the rules to me. So that's that's yeah. really interesting because I was pretty sure that when you are a developer, a programmer, that you still have to like keep learning new things, new methods, that it is like it looked to me like a super interesting, challenging and difficult job. And what you're saying seems like the opposite. I'm yeah, tell me more about this. <laughs> yeah, like every everyone can has its own opinion sure uh, like you know when i was just in that time i was thinking okay i cannot do that in uh, uh in five ten years because i think that it will be not that creative as uh -huh. i can imagine okay uh, yeah still like learning better approaches uh, learning new languages new technologies it, it, it's it's still um it's still you know creative but i think in that like now with emerging technologies it's even more visible but like seven eight years ago i i thought that like there is no there's just one way uh -huh. when you go, go into programming and you know you learn one technology and okay that wouldn't be that creative but now with emerging technologies like with rising you know, yeah. on the web, that could make it different. But in that time, I thought that SEO is much more creative. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a very nice, interesting perspective. Yeah, so your first internship, was it at Wanli? No, no, it was uh, in Excel Media, in okay. Opera, which is uh, a city in Poland. Uh huh. Then after that, uh, I found a job in uh, in Walni. Okay. I think it was like six years now in at Walni. So yeah. Yeah, quite, quite a long. long time. And what did you start uh, at Walni? What were you like a junior SEO? This is how you started. Yeah, and um, one of my first tasks was server local analysis. Okay, so that's uh, a that difficult was, task for a junior SEO. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like, okay, you go into like deep water. This, if, if I'm correct, uh, if you, this is the proper saying in English. Like, yeah, yeah. You go Jump. into the ocean of SEO and then do your stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this allowed me to learn uh, uh, SEO quickly. You know, when I was like step by step, by like small steps, um, comparing to, okay, this these are server logs. Like two gigabytes of server of server logs, and then <laughs> wow. the analysis and tell why the client uh, lost the traffic. So that was like crazy, but still, I uh, I was able to to learn a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really really interesting. So, and then what? Uh, once you like mastered file log analysis, what 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 else were you doing that at Onely? And like, if you can tell me more about Onely in general. Yeah. Okay. So. First of all, that was six years ago. Yeah. I just remember, you know, the, the the thing that you remember the most is like like the beginning, but 
you're then you're not sure what's in the middle. I think yeah. that was kind of things related to keyword research, but I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. yeah, the first was uh, server lock analysis. Okay. So um, explain more, uh, introducing Wani.com. Um, it's, I think it's pretty known technical SEO agency in, uh, in the SEO world. Uh, we are known for things like international SEO, for JavaScript SEO, uh, for indexing SEO. So anytime people can, like, that's a lot of cases. So when uh, a client has got a problem with JavaScript, uh, because they introduce a new shiny technology related to JavaScript, and then they notice that they had like they the traffic is like zero after yeah, the migration <laughs> going to, towards zero, and they notice okay something went wrong. So they they try to find a solution for this problem. Um, yeah, and then oftentimes they reach to us. Same with uh, indexing. Uh, when one of our clients has got like 90, sometimes 90, 90% 90 uh, drop. So this is like, you know, uh, pretty horrific, pretty uh -huh. huge drop. And then, yeah, like, kind of <laughs> really breaking, really quickly, right? Uh huh. So, so, uh, yeah. so if you can tell me. Give, can you give me a few like examples of those uh, JavaScript SEO problems, like some funny ones? Like, so you're saying that you the new technology like traffic drops, but if you can give me more more concrete examples, because I, I guess it may be very interesting for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think we can discuss. I would say discuss.com, which is one of the most uh -huh. uh, popular. Uh, add-ons for WordPress for for like commenting plugin. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we told them on Twitter uh, like four years ago, hey guys, you've got a problem because this is your visibility drop. Uh huh. Uh, like ninety nine percent of visibility drop. Oh. And we know exactly what happened. Uh, they and what did they reply. say? They didn't reply. They didn't fix that for four years. Oh, uh, so that was uh, that was a huge, um, huge mistake, I would say, on on the side. But what happened? Uh, what did they change? You know, they didn't react. And what happened uh, is that uh, like they they were trying to introduce um, dynamic rendering, and that means that they were serving different version for for Googlebot. Uh huh uh than the users and uh, that version that was uh, served for googlebot uh, just has failed and googlebot was getting empty content so users were like visiting that website everything was fine but google was getting like almost uh, oh. no content at all okay. so like the uh, when you try to to find on twitter uh, Tomek Rutski, discuss.com, you will find this example, like they had like 99% of uh, visibility drop and they still didn't care about that. Or they just didn't know that. <laughs> Maybe they didn't it. see the message because it's like, I don't know, weird. <laughs> Very weird. Okay. Okay. And how about yeah. indexing? Sorry? And how about indexing? Can you like uh, talk about this uh, indexing SEO, SEO indexation SEO? Like, what is it like? Because it seems like this is a new area in SEO mm -hmm. that's becoming more interesting. What are some of the interesting cases you can share? Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, we need oftentimes when you create a website. You expect that Google will index uh, every page because that's the requirement for ranking. Because if something is not in Google, then uh, it doesn't get any traffic. But that in a perfect world. <laughs> like, it doesn't okay. happen that often because commonly Google is not indexing, let's say, 20, 30% of your website. Um, that's especially a problematic part for 
for massive websites uh, because here like tens or ten hundred, tens of hundreds of uh, pages are not indexed. So let's say there are 20 million of pages and uh, four million of pages are not indexed. And uh -huh. Many of them are valuable, but still they're not into Google index. Then you try to find the exact cause for that. And by understanding the exact cause, you understand how uh, you can help that website. Uh, when you look when you look at Google Search Console, you can mm -hmm. see there are two most popular reasons. The first is cross currency not indexed, which means that Google was there but decided not to index that. Uh, many times people think that it, it's about a specific page, but oftentimes it's about um, the website overall. So if one oh. would see that uh, the website is of poor quality, they decide, OK, we will index just small part of this website. A uh, second most popular problem is uh, discovered currently not indexed. Um, that means that Google noticed that the URL exists, but they still didn't, um, didn't visit that. Uh -huh. Commonly, the problem of crawl budget. Mm, okay. And JavaScript uh, adds more complexity to, to that. So commonly, you know, like rendering counts to our crawl budget. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, you know, like every request counts. Uh, and uh, everything, like, it's like, you know, it's interconnected. Uh -huh. When there is more, much JavaScript, a lot of requests, then crawl budget can go down. And you know, every request, every resource like comp is competing against each other for okay. uh, for, for like crawl budget. Every page uh, that is uh, apparent on your website is competing against not only about other websites, but also uh, hmm. competing against all other pages mm -hmm. on your website. So this is. Uh, like there are there are lots of patterns on crawling and indexing, and Google has got a specific threshold for for crawling. So if um, a page is popular, uh, if it, a page is expected to have high quality, then it gets um, more priority. But if not, it goes to the end of the crawling queue and mm -hmm. maybe in the crawling queue forever. So this is uh, oh. this is very challenging. So like fixing indexing issues is, is like understanding JavaScript SEO, understanding crawl budget, understanding quality. So it's like one of the most complex uh, SEO, SEO parts. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, so yeah. OK, and so what's at, what sizes of websites are like more uh, prone to, to having those problems? Because I guess you, you, you're saying massive websites. So if my website has, I don't know, 150 pages, then probably I don't have to worry about this. Uh, the answer, like when you say it probably, depends. like probably, but you know, uh, especially in, in last year, I noticed a lot of examples when uh, owners or very small websites were like claiming that, okay, my website is there for, let's say one, two months, one, two months, uh -huh. and a lot of links coming to my website and still Google index just homepage and no other pages. Uh -huh. There are more and more cases like this and uh, they report these pages are discovered currently not indexed. So, it, 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 it is about crawling queue. In most of the cases, when Google noticed, OK, these pages are probably not worthy of being crawled at this time, because they compete against not only, as I said, not only against uh, internal pages, but also against the whole internet, I would say. OK, yeah, so that makes things really complex so w when did you notice that 
this is this started to happen because I guess this is like a relatively new thing, new problem. I think it was like March or, or April of uh, 2022. Uh-huh. Okay. But And... uh, and I, I cannot say exactly when it yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, sure. This is sure. when I, like this is approxim approximation when I noticed um, like people started complaining about this one. Because we uh -huh. complained <laughs> we for about index issues for a long time, but this is when the mainstream uh, like you know noticed yeah. the problem and then Okay, okay. So people started complaining, you started hearing stories about pages not being indexed, and is this how ZipTie dev was born? Yeah, um, this this is pretty much the, the story, but like adding more fuel. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like we were investigating JavaScript SEO issues, and then we noticed that, you know, not only JavaScript problem has got um th these kinds of problems but also like normal traditional html websites uh -huh. so we noticed that uh, you know like huge websites like 20 30 percent of pages not being indexed and that pattern was among like not only one one website but we noticed okay another website has got similar problem another website has got similar problems so that was a clear pattern uh that needed to be addressed addressed uh -huh. and that needed to be solved. Uh, okay. then, I noticed, then I wrote an article for one of the most popular SEO, you know, newspapers, magazines. SCJ? Um, I won't name. Uh, okay. I will have to the... Google. Sorry? I will have to Google that. No, no. I, I don't disclose information needed to... to uh, Okay. The, the name of this the, the, this brand uh, because that article wasn't published. Ah, oh, okay. So that's right. Uh, that article wasn't published because one of the editors told that uh, there are no problems with indexing HTML websites. Uh, this is JavaScript that creates a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was like, mm, like it was very difficult to you know to like. Uh, to show people in our industry that the problem exists because like I was I wanted to create an article like for one of the most popular sources in our industry but they thought no it's not HTML websites they, they don't have problems because Google said so okay uh, that was you know so that, that's why I don't want to name that uh, yeah sure sure that, that, that source Uh, yeah, but that, that showed me that, you know, it's us versus the rest uh, that we need uh -huh. to. And that, that was a similar story to, to JavaScript SEO. Uh, I would say that's exact story, like JavaScript SEO, because uh, maybe you don't uh, remember, but Google was saying that they're totally fine with, with uh, indexing and rendering JavaScript. Yeah. Um, so like 2014 2015 yeah i remember uh but the problem happened when uh, Bartosz Guralewicz the ceo of wally.com he created an experiment he used basic version of the most popular javascript frameworks so uh, angular react uh vue.js and in turn it turned out that google had problems with indexing that content so it wasn't like sophisticated um, mm -hmm. algorithms. We just following the official documentation of how to create a okay. basic uh, website using that framework. So we were following the official guidelines and still that website was, wasn't indexed. Mm -hmm. And so like we were talking about, you know, JavaScript a little bit more, a little bit more. So this is the uh, popularity chart of JavaScript. Yeah, so it, it's getting popular, it's getting popular. The, the more popularity and then after this experiment everybody started talking about uh, javascript okay. because you know uh, like they felt that when you are seo and you work with multiple clients at least one client has got javascript website and probably that client has got problems with, with this website because of 
uh, Google cannot render or mm -hmm. uh, JavaScript is consuming our crawl budget. So yeah, that that became a necessity. So okay. I, I, I believe that this is how trends are created. And same story is uh, with indexing. Not mm -hmm. so many people were discussing indexing, but now in 2000, like we, we've got uh, our recording in 2023, but one year ago, uh, a lot of people noticed that the, there are lots of problems with, uh, with indexing. Um, the data is it, still not public, uh, but I noticed during a uh, spam update that uh, a lot of websites has got um, like 20, 30 percent of the pages they indexed from Google. Oh. Okay. And are these like very spammy websites? Uh, I would say no. Uh, they were quite massive, uh, quite massive websites. Uh, uh -huh commerce stores classified. So they were not using uh, AI content. They were not using um, okay. any other black hat technique techniques. They were just following uh, Google guidelines. And you know, oh. some pages are good, some pages are not uh, for, for Google index, but it, the, they were white pages. And I also noticed that um, there are quite uh, quite few websites uh, that suffer from from Google back with uh, duplicate content. Uh huh. So Google was uh, seeing uh, two product pages. One was with uh, iPhone. Second was with JBL speaker, and Google uh -huh. thought they're the same. Oh, was it because of JavaScript? That was part of the reason, but still, the second part of the reason is not uh -huh. uh, solved yet. Uh, because I, I wrote an article about that. In this case, that was a JavaScript website. Mm -hmm. But uh, there were many other websites that suffer from, uh, from this very issue uh, that you wouldn't classify them as JavaScript. They have some, mm -hmm. some JavaScript elements, but it's not like JavaScript is responsible for the main content. OK. And regarding AI content, do you have like any observations regarding how well it is indexed? Whether like do you have some examples of sites that were they indexed because they have AI content? That, I would say that's a great uh, way for, to, for experiment. Uh -huh. uh, I would say with. Uh, the recent algorithms, um, Google will likely index that. Uh, uh -huh. But I don't have like very specific data. Like, okay, Google will index AI generated content in like let's say ninety nine percent. Like it, sure. it's not that uh, it's not that easy because like there are other factors come into play like link popularity, uh, URL popularity. Uh, like, uh, you know, the website overall. So it's very difficult to, to like, I would have a quite huge sample uh, to, to solve that problem. It, it probably I yeah. will like the, this experiment, but not, like that's for, I would say second part yeah. of 2023. Sure. Sure, sure. So, uh, so what are other possible reasons why the site does not get indexed, in, except for uh, JavaScript and like quality, overall quality? Are there any reasons why it may happen? Yeah, duplicate content, uh, Soft 404. Uh, we uh -huh. had a quite interesting case of Soft 404 uh, because um, we noticed that in the case of one website. Uh, that was a model uh -huh. uh, showing to show showing to the user. So I would say this is part of JavaScript, <laughs> but okay. that's a broader issue. Uh, there was like there are no products available, something like that. Uh -huh. uh, that was like an answer for for a specific filter, but for some reason that was uh, in a, in the main code code. So that uh -huh. was 
visible on uh, on the main website. That was just like uh, that was just shown uh, for a specific uh, search uh, on the website. But uh -huh. still, that was available for for Googlebot, and Googlebot was saying, okay, if that website says me that there are no products available, why should I index that? So there okay. were like uh, hundred thousand of uh, of products classified as soft four hundred four. Oh, so that was that was quite uh, that was quite huge huge issue. Uh, also, Ma Martin Spitz uh, mentioned a similar example uh, when uh, the page was about four hundred fours. Uh huh. And Google was saying, okay. There are so many 404s on this website, uh, on this uh, page, because this article was about 404. Uh, so they just, they indexed that, that, it, that, that page. Okay, yeah. I thought it was a 404. <laughs> yeah, of course, there are many mistakes made by webmaster developers, like uh, when canonical tags are not consi consistent between uh, JavaScript and HTML version. Uh -huh. uh, you can block Googlebot by mistake, so you can put no index on your page. You can block uh, by robots text. Uh, so yeah, there is no. This is this is what makes indexing interesting because there is no single reason for for the website having problem with indexing. Uh -huh. uh, if you have to look at the website, try to analyze what's the problem. Oftentimes you need to think out of, out of the box. Uh, so yeah, this is like challenging, especially when it's a new path. Uh, and then you follow, the, you trail that new path. That, that, that's what, what makes it interesting. Yeah, yeah. OK, so what does ZipTie Dev do? Tell me all about it. Okay, so Olga, I guess you, you've got a website, you've got your uh, a lot of clients, and they mm -hmm. want their website to get indexed. And when you go to Google Search Console, you notice, okay, not whole website is indexed. Then you think, mm -hmm. why? Then you think uh, exactly what pages are not indexed. And Google Search Console will not tell you which exact pages are not indexed. This is what uh, this is when uh, ZipTie Dev come into play. Uh, I think I can share a screen. Yeah, sure, please do. That's a great idea. Okay, yeah. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so yeah. Here is an example of West Wing Now, which uh -huh. is a quite popular Swiss website. As you can see now, they are pretty much indexed. But what happened during the spam update is that they lost like 20% uh -huh. uh, of the pages when it comes to indexing. Yeah, And when you see this kind of statistics in Google Search Console, you are like, wow, what happened? And then you yeah. don't have any clue what happened. Uh, but with ZipTie Dev, you can see exactly uh, which URLs got uh, got the indexed. So you can easily click on compare URLs. Okay. Uh, it takes a while. I mean, a short <laughs> short while, uh, and then you sure. you've got um, you've got okay. a list of pages that were the indexed. So this is like over three thousand of pages that oh. were the indexed. So you can easily see exact list. You can export. Um, you can uh, see additional information about this specific URLs. Uh, but also what uh, was very interesting. So yeah, so here, uh, this is the URL list. Uh, uh -huh. Loaded. Uh, you can see details about this, this, these pages. OK. So you, you've got the title, you've got the H1, uh, additional information such as canonicals. And how often are those checks performed? Uh, something went wrong. Oh, 404. <laughs> ah, that, that was soft 404, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, when it comes to monitoring, 
you can uh, monitor every okay. let's say one day there is no problem you you got uh you can set up exact time when uh, when it starts so you can uh monitor every one day every two days whatever uh, okay whatever you prefer also you got uh, more information about um about the specific list of urs and you you got data insights uh -huh. and, oh. yeah so you can see you can see exact categories exact types of pages that are indexed and which aren't so even with block category um there is quite a huge problem uh, mm -hmm. yeah. there is no difference with with news so that, that that's surprising because you know when you create a blog uh you expect that most of pages will, will be in indexed that's not the case and then you can go into semantic analysis so you can see uh, if there is specific difference between um semantic metrics uh between structure as you can see uh -huh. in the oh. case of uh, index pages uh there are less layout objects so there is less javascript uh, there is less nodes in in html so there is uh, like the smaller structure mm -hmm. uh, there are, and also there is um, more paragraphs so like there okay. is more content but still uh, content is not created by javascript in this case uh, but also for like for any website the information can be uh, in, information can be different because like this is uh, generated automatically uh, you can easily you can easily check uh, insights uh -huh. uh, this is like uh, so you can using zipta you can check uh, which URLs are indexed which aren't you can start monitoring and also you can get uh, insight insight uh, is uh, i would say it's in, in in beta version because we still uh there's still a lot of to do when it comes to insights report but when it comes to projects uh, what makes zipta interesting is that uh, you can create audit based on three modes so you can uh -huh. uh, paste sitemaps you can paste url list uh and a crawl so this way mm. uh, so you can tick if you want to start monitoring uh if you want to check for for javascript rendering yeah so this is pretty much uh, nice, how this nice. works so like there is no rocket science i would say this is the tool that will let you know if you want if you have indexing problems or not and then it will give you exact list of URLs that are not indexed. And some correlations, right? Yeah. Okay. So you you said you you had some programming background. Were you like the person who was developing that tool? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we've got uh, three programmers. Okay. Uh, and they are responsible for 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 programming. Like after five, six years of non-programming, yeah. like when I was just coding some, just some basic pages, uh, some basic algorithms, like, you know, like get inside map, you know, like uh -huh. maybe some, 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 some other, but still like a few liners. Uh, uh -huh. I, I wouldn't make it like the full, like they're, you know, yeah, they're sure. doing their job. So why should I, you know, yeah, today sure. <laughs> they they drop, and then when I'm not that good in programming, yeah. and the, the, this time I was just you know, curious. It's like... Yeah, sure. So how how can we use uh, Zip Tie Dev? Is there like a free trial or yeah. like how does so it work? So there is a 14 day free trial, so you can uh, you can try it for 14 days. Mm -hmm. You will get some uh, some some credits for free, so this way you can uh, you can try it. If you get any any question, then 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 you can just ask. There is there is a special form. Uh, you uh -huh. can send them. You can drop us a message. Uh, yeah, and you know this is uh, when we all want to solve 
indexing problems and mm -hmm. zip tie dev is the answer for you know un to to understand indexing problems because uh, it's not going away. Uh, I would say now I I suspect that indexing will be more and more complex, more mm -hmm. and more difficult because first of all. Um, rising competition uh, wh why would google index something if there is like tens of pages on specific topic a specific yeah. subtopic even uh, so google will be thinking twice if um, if something will will need to be indexed or not mm -hmm. uh, and this is my theory that uh, indexing is getting complex not only about the rising competition but also, it's a big decision for Google to index a, a specific page. Mm -hmm. Because when you compare a small Google from, from a garage, uh, when Larry Page and Siri Brin, they, they, they yeah. started their company, like the indexing, like the, the whole web was so small. And comparing to now, it's, it's like... No I comparison. Would, it, <laughs> There is, there is no comparison, but even comparing to like five, six year, uh, years back to now, mm -hmm. when Google didn't want to render JavaScript, uh, and now when Google tries to render JavaScript uh, of almost every page, it's like tw 20 times more uh -huh. into that uh, calculation. Yeah. But when yeah. you add more algorithms like BERT, MAM, which are incredibly more difficult, more resource consuming uh -huh. than, uh, than, than JavaScript rendering. Uh, this is what I, what I took from Google because they say that rendering is cheap, you know, mm -hmm. for them. Uh, but there was uh, information on, on Google blog that models such as BERT or MAM uh, put the limits of what they can do using traditional software. Uh -huh. So if they say from one, one side that uh, rendering is cheap, but from the other side, they're claiming that um, this kind of algorithms like Batman put the limits on what they can mm. use using traditional software. That means that it's much more uh, resource consuming than rendering. So I would say like, it could be like, Hundred times more wow. uh, resource consuming than just five or six times a year, six uh, years ago, and now uh, that's a big decision for Google to index or not. And they mm -hmm. want uh, many pages to like uh, not to crawl them because they if they crawl them uh, they will try to put the whole analysis if, if the content <laughs> is worthy or not. Uh, and then if uh, it goes to index, index is getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And you know, when they want to serve users quickly, uh, they cannot you know, extend uh, the index yeah. size to infinity because all things being equal, it will take longer to, um, to serve the, the, the users. So they, they need to, you know, they need to decide quickly if they want to end the page or not. So it's like pre, they, they have to use a lot of heuristics uh -huh. controlling and indexing. And this is part of the reason. Uh, oftentimes it's not that specific page is low quality because Google didn't even visit that page. Yeah. Because that page uh, falls into specific patterns of low quality URLs. Like, that story, okay. I could tell that story for for ages, but you know, this is yeah, uh, this is when uh, it comes into into a challenge. Yeah. So historically, our job as SEOs was to rank websites highly, and it looks like now it is to get websites indexed. <laughs> kind of a small change. Oh, yeah, we are it? going up, uh, down to the level like the, the you know the the pyramid. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Exactly. Well. When you've got your JavaScript needs fulfilled, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> then surprisingly you got down to the uh, the foundation of the pyramid. Then you need to fix indexing and crawling. 
this is what happened. I would say it's not going down the pyramid, but it's like the cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they want to push their limit, uh, push their resources to, to render JavaScript. And that created a lot of uh, new challenges to, mm, I think it's a, I think it's related. Mm -hmm. uh, look this way, uh, JavaScript raised the price by 20 times. Uh -huh. uh, algorithms such as Bert, Mom, uh, even more. This is my simplified calculation, like in total it's sure. 100. So there, there is a drawback and the drawback is indexing in, 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 this, in, in this regard. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. Sure, and are there any interesting projects except for this one you are involved in or planning on doing in 2023? Yes. Tell me. <laughs> of course. Uh, but uh, I would say this project is more secret. It's in beta. Uh -huh. uh, that's a tool helping uh, people create a better content to rank better. Mm -hmm. So it, it involves uh, getting feature snippet, getting uh, better ranking, uh, but we at, the, at, at this level we validate the idea, uh, like we created a proof of concept. Then we've got a team of uh, copywriters mm -hmm. uh, who, um, based on the input from our software, they rephrase the. Uh, creating new articles, and then we, we try to understand if its ranking is better or not. Okay. So now it's a validation part, uh, but I cannot be disclose more. Sure. Because it's just, you know, now it's internal project for, for, for us. If we are successful, then we go to the market. Okay, okay. And where do you stand uh, regarding chat GPT, like what's the future for us? How are you going to use that? Are you using that? So basically, um, yeah, why not? Uh, I, will, uh, I will be using that. So uh -huh. uh, Jemek, uh, who is a chief marketing officer, um, he, he sent me, Tomek, but you need to fix grammar mistakes on this, uh, on this text. Uh -huh. And he sent me, uh, example from chat GBT, um, when he asked uh, the chat, hey, uh, can you fix grammar on, on this uh, uh -huh. document? And that was like pretty good English. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that much better than uh, what I wrote. So that <laughs> this shows that it's not only about, you know, SEO, like creating content to, to rank high, but also in like every everyday job. In yeah. that situation, uh, I would write for some specific thing. I, I can think of many examples when uh, I would create a small Python script for something. Now I can ask, yeah, my that, hey, let's do this. Yeah. So, uh, but also, I think, ah, this is, uh, this is very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. So, there is a lot of artificial intelligence, like there is a huge buzz about this kind of stuff. And uh, I think that you agree that um, in near future, a lot of people will be using that for creating uh, content and then yeah. try to rank in Google, right? Sure. Uh, I think there is no way back. And mm -hmm. uh, with recent models, the quality is much higher. Uh, than in uh, like previous models, mm -hmm. some of them yeah. using like basic Markov models. Uh, this is much more sophisticated. Uh, but with um, they, they would be a great challenge, huge challenge for Google because if they get flooded by lots of content created by artificial intelligence, uh, that's a huge risk for them. Uh, that's yeah. a good thing for Google because you know if uh, if you are as a user is trying to use Google search and like fifty percent of content is like generated by JavaScript, uh, what Wait, <laughs> it's generated, what's AI? Yeah, it's generated by AI, and um, then you notice 
But what's the point of using that software? What's the point of using Google search engine if I get this shitty result? Uh, and if many people like you notice that problem, that's a huge problem for Google because, you know, they lose um, users, they lo lose money from ads. Uh, they cannot, uh, they cannot accept uh -huh. like low quality content being yeah. in the index. Yeah, but so I, I do believe that they, the quality thresholds mm -hmm. in this case will be uh, much higher and they will be prioritizing the content that currently exists. Uh, mm -hmm. in the index this is my suspicion uh, this is my my idea but uh, you never know which way uh, google will follow but uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, they all uh -huh. agree internally at google that they cannot afford a lot of uh, ai content uh, being in the index yeah but how about like people saying that chat GPT will replace Google because like, why do we need to use Google if we can have chat GPT answer of our, all our questions and there are no ads at least now. <laughs> you know, we are SEO, so we'll be optimizing yeah. our content. For chat. For chat. <laughs> you know? Who knows? <laughs> it happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but... Mm, I, I don't think, like, my understanding is that um, chat won't replace Google. Yeah. Because chat is, uh, is trained on a specific um, set of results. Mm -hmm. If there is something new, like, all the news area cannot be pre-trained. Because, yeah. you know, you could yeah. train model every second every yeah. millisecond to, to get the, the latest news. Yeah, uh, you're right. So it can, you know, answer in some of the exam, some of the topics like, uh, like what is the evergreen. Of, yeah, with evergreen content, uh, it could be quite, quite good, but not with uh, news uh, with recent... Uh, SEO news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like artificial intelligence couldn't create, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it won't into a, 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 what happened. And I, I think that there was, a, yeah, there was a tweet, on so somebody asked the, the chat, yeah, um, if they're going to replace Google. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, I asked them. I, I asked Hi, it too. Yeah. Maybe it was my tweet, but I, I tweet up, tweeted about that too, and he said no. <laughs> Yeah, so the answer was no, right? Yeah. So yeah. we need to trust artificial intelligence. We need to try. Uh, we need to trust that they are not going to replace Google. Yeah, yeah. That's, we have to be optimistic that, yeah, that things will. Yeah, but, will... like, what's the difference for you? Mm, I don't know. The difference for me is that I, because what will happen to websites, like, Will websites still have any sense? Will it be a good idea to have a website? Will this business model work if ChatGPT can answer all the questions? Yeah, that's I am a, like... That's a valid point. Yeah, I am like worried about blogging affiliate websites. Like, will they all die? That's a valid point. Like, uh, because they can answer... Like, but I think what's the best is, tool for yeah. this? And it will tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's hope it will. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe it will. It won't happen. At least not that soon. So that we can get ready and find, find different ways of monetizing knowledge. Okay, so like, yeah, yeah. So just tell me, like, to, to, to end, tell me what does your day look like in, in Tomek's life? Like, wh what do you do when you, like, when do you study? How much you work? Like, I'm very curious to, to learn. So, yeah, I, I work, uh, try to work, like, eight, eight hours uh -huh. per day. But sometimes it's like when I notice something very interesting, then I 
I like okay. stop tracking time and like go into that rabbit hole. Uh, so yeah, in the morning we we've got our daily meetings we, with programmers and with uh, data scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, then we plan our work. Uh, you now, uh, so I would say uh, at zip time I'm kind of a special ops. So there is no specific field I I, I deal with. I uh -huh. mean. I, I just now, now I'm more into marketing, uh, but there are some phases when, uh, when I'm more into like product development, understanding our customers needs. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes I go into the rabbit hole and see, okay, there is indexing problem with specific uh, website, uh, specific kind of uh, specific patterns of indexing okay. problem. Uh, and see, okay, there is a bug on Google site and I write an article about that or something like that. Uh, sometimes uh, I do custom analysis for our clients. They notice that, okay, Google, like they index 30% of their pages. Uh, they don't know what happened and then I do this kind of analysis. Uh, mm -hmm. So usually I get as much data as possible, like getting data from Google Search Console, Google Analytics, mm -hmm. Google Ads. Uh, then I try to understand patterns and, you know, like trying to understand yeah. all, why it happens. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So uh, you, you cannot say, okay, this is my, my day. This is what I do every day uh, because it depends on what. Yeah. On the day. day and... uh, yeah, sure. yeah. Like recently I, I'm more and more into marketing. So I, I read. Uh, marketing books and video video courses uh, because mm -hmm. I try to understand that I want to like share the idea of ZipTie because I I, I believe that uh, that's great product answering mm -hmm. specific users specific needs because there is specific problem with indexing and this yeah. is what uh, ZipTie was created for. Now I try to find the connection because I I know that there is a huge value in that. I just want to find how to like tell the people, hey, mm -hmm. there is value. Use that tool because you've got mm -hmm. a problem with indexing. Uh, yeah. yeah, so this is, I would say I bought special ops. Now I'm more into more into marketing mm -hmm. uh, and trying to understand users' needs. Okay, okay. So any final tips for 2023? Just uh, keep your eyes open. Uh, what what happen? What is happening? Mm -hmm. uh, usually, I would say um, watch for Twitter because there is so much news over there. But mm -hmm. uh, there are some other platforms right now. Mast Mastodon. Yeah, I'm a boomer, so <laughs> I don't know <laughs> that well. I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, and sometimes on Facebook, but so I don't know exactly what's there, but. Usually I'm, uh, but still, um, Twitter is lively place uh, for, for SEO, uh, and I have um, I have a specific filter for what I read. Uh -huh. If I see that at least three four people share something uh, something on the wall, uh, then I start reading. I don't start reading uh, when one or two people will share something okay. because you know there is so much information over there. You cannot yeah. read every article. I also like um, uh, some some newspapers. Uh, one of them was created by Alida Soli. So you got uh, every week you've got an email and you see, mm -hmm. okay, there, there was the news about this one, this one, this one. And you've got all the needed information. And then you uh, you know what happened in, in our industry. Um, yeah. You cannot predict everything. Uh, but you can watch for trends, mm -hmm. and it's always like this. You you have to think out of the box. If you, you have to find your own way of analysis, like most of analysis uh, I did with indexing uh, were not covered in other sources. So I, you need to uh -huh. go. You need to find your own way of analyzing something. Uh, you need to think out of the box how things are interconnected. Uh, mm -hmm. Because SEO is not like you do A, B, C, and then you are in point D. 
uh, it's more like, you know, you have to find your own yeah. way over there on this SEO ocean. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Okay, so what's the best place to follow you? Is it Twitter? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn. I'm, okay. I'm a player, so I'm not on Mastodon. Okay. Yet. <laughs> Yet. It. We'll see how it goes. Okay, okay, Tomek. So thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with me and with, with the audience. And yes, everyone, uh, thanks. And we'll see, I will see you in the next uh, episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all.